All right, all right. What's good, everybody? BQ and TW here with episode, what is it now? Episode four of the Cool Factor podcast talking impact wrestling. Yeah, this is a month. This is a month. We have changed your lives for a month now. Ooh, I dig it. I dig it. Uh, four weeks now, and uh, <laughs> we're enjoying what we're doing. Hope you guys are enjoying this too. And uh, we want to go over the latest episode of Impact Wrestling, but just the, you know, just the, the meat and potatoes, the good points. Uh, don't want to don't want to put you guys to sleep with anything uh, you don't want to hear about. So there's actually a few talking points uh, this episode that I think we can discuss. Last week, we, the, the show was a little shorter. Uh, we didn't really because, you know, not a whole lot happened last week. Not a whole lot that happened this week either, in all honesty. But there's still there's still some talking points um, and we're going to jump right into them just like we always do. The first, uh, the first thing that stands out to me is that this was the return of Eddie Edwards. And uh, I can't say it was, it was expected. You know, th- this wasn't Marty Jannetty hopping out of the crowd after Shawn Michaels hit him with the mirror. You know what I mean? It wasn't a, it, it wasn't, it wasn't Which a, is an underrated moment in wrestling history. Oh, very underrated, very underrated. And I, I think we're just... It's just been done so much over the past wrestlers coming back from injury and all that. It's just, you just know they're coming. So it's not a, it's not a huge surprise. Uh, I did like that. He can't, you know, they didn't play his music first. I like that. Josh Matthews didn't say, who, who's this? He almost did. He almost did. Uh, but he, he <laughs> that's usually, usually what he does. Um, but uh, Eddie returns, he attacks, uh, Eric Young and Eric Young uh, was was taking out the Deaners and I want to know your thoughts on this beatdown because I I thought it made sense because he wasn't necessarily taking him out by himself because he uh, he attacked him and even when he when uh, he pretended to leave the ring then he came back and attacked Jake so it wasn't like it was this one on two thing it, it you know he was he was definitely sneak attacking him but for me after we went a couple of weeks praising Eric Young's promo work and his promo work was great and his little bound for glory package is really cool too this beatdown felt like it was never going to end like it felt like this was 10 minutes of him <laughs> jumping the deaners and I was like, when it, when are we gonna come to a conclusion here? Like, what's going on? Every every second that passed just made the Deaners work, work look worse and worse. And then I'm willing to bet that the Deaners don't try to get any kind of retribution from this because they've done this before, where someone looks like a fool one week and then they never try to, uh, you know, like OVE was in, for instance, when Sammy Callahan uh, attacked them in that match with Kent Shamrock, and then they never try to get their revenge on him. I'm I'm willing to put money that the Deaners never get their revenge on uh, Eric Young here, but what do you, um, I don't know. So what do you got on this and uh, the return of Eddie? Well, nothing. And this was my exact tweet. Nothing makes a tag team look weaker than getting beat down by one guy. And I, th- you said it yourself. Both of these guys, both of the Deaners – got beat up by Eric Young. And listen, I, I, they did it logically, right? Like he jumped them from behind, took out one guy and beat up the other guy. But, I mean, come on, man. Like, listen, if it's you and a friend, you going to tell me that you think in your heart of hearts that the two of y'all can get jumped by one dude? Like, come on, man. And then, like you said, it was the beat down that never ended. And then he got out of the ring and, and he let Cousin Jake chase him out of the ring. And then he got back in the ring and started beating out Cousin Jake. And it's like, yo, the Deaners are done. I mean, like, not that they ever had any big plans for the Deaners, but, I mean, come on, bro. Come on. So that, um, yeah, you know, they put a nail in the coffin of the Deaners. That, that was not great for them. And then Eddie Edwards came back. And, I mean, listen, I couldn't really believe he was even off TV to begin with. Like, it's not like his match against 
Eric Young really ended in some super devastating injury angle where it made sense to me that he was off TV. They did the thing with Alicia the following week on TV where she explained that Eddie was hurt and home. But I was like, I guess, right? I mean, it didn't really seem like that big of a deal. Um, And so then, you know, I'm supposed to be shocked at the Eddie Edwards comeback. And when I saw Eddie Edwards come back, my first thought was, okay, the Bound for Glory main event just turned into a triple threat. But then they announced that there was actually going to be the match at uh, the return of Impact Plus specials, Victory Road. So... Yeah. You know, before we get into Victory Road, with this company. Before we get into Victory Road, yeah, you're you're talking about tag teams taking a two on one or one on two beat down. And uh, you know, I've talked about this before that they have no confidence in certain in some of their tag teams. Um, unless they come from like WWE or something, but it's the the guys are their guys. They have no confidence in man. Uh you know, Reno Scum lost to Rhino like three weeks ago. And then Reno Scum even lost to Eddie Edwards like several months ago in these, uh, you know, one-on-two wow. matches. You know what I mean? And I just – that's crazy, man. Um, th- these guys – There's that, no better way to say this tag team is garbage than to have the team lose to one guy. Right. It's – it's. Um, I, I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> but um, let, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Impact Plus here. So – I do want to throw with Eddie when he was backstage yelling at Scott and and stuff like that's what I want to, I want to see a little more fire from him like that. So I enjoyed that. I like, I liked him. Uh, uh, Scott, Scott's getting a lot of TV time lately and um, you know, he, he's yelling at Scott. He wants his rematch and you know, Scott, you, you want your rematch? I'll give you your rematch. Well, I thought that was all kind of <laughs> cheesy, but um, he go he, he goes, you're getting your rematch at Victory Road. If I were Eddie, I would have been like, when the fuck is that? I mean, there was no... <laughs> at this point, <laughs> you know, I thank God that Josh after this was like, oh, December 8th, Victory, or what, not December 8th, October something, I believe. I don't uh, know. October wait. 3rd. Okay, October 3rd. All right. So, uh, at least they, you know, semi-promoted it, but it was so out of the blue that there's, you know, you're talking kayfabe. There's no way Eddie knew when this match was going to happen. Um, but Eddie was trying to say he wanted it about right. the glory. And, uh, y- you know, I know I bitch a lot about the Call Your Shot Gauntlet trophy, you know. Um, and someone was trying to <laughs> tell me on Twitter the other day, well, you know, I don't understand your beef with it because, you know, he put it up against Michael Elgin. Like, he chose to put it up. Can you imagine, dude, Edge was the first ever Money in the Bank winner. The first ever. Can you imagine if right. the story was him winning the money, the briefcase and then going on some long, drawn-out feud over the briefcase and then, you know, unceremonial. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that was a legendary cash-in. You know, um, it actually reminded me of uh, – back in like when Wade Barrett won the NXT show and the big NXT uh, prize was a world title match. And then when he, when right. he, you know, he says, okay, I'm challenging Cena at this date. Whoever the GM came out was like, okay, we're going to make it a five way. I mean, th- that's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> this dude, he can't get a one-on-one match for the title. And then now he is getting a one-on-one match and it is at like a house show. I mean, that for the first ever storyline for your call your shot Gotland winner, he's had the oddest uh, path up to being a champion or trying to be a champion. Or I mean, uh, it's so odd to me. But so it's going to be a victory road. But now we're getting the return of Impact Plus shows again. So that's good because it, you know that's really the only reason, uh, unless you're some one of these people just sit around and watch the library all day, which I know some people do. Uh, that's really the only reason to subscribe to the app, you know, in my opinion, as far as like paying the money for it. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, 
you know, we were discussing off air. I was saying that, you know, every now and then I'll think of a match that I like to see. Um, for me, my favorite time in Impact Wrestling history was uh, like 09 to 2014, basically the Spike TV era. And, um, and for some reason, and when I say some reason, I mean, I'm pretty sure that it's because, you know, Dixie screwed over somebody somewhere. Like that stuff is not available on the Impact Plus app. And um, it's a shame because there was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff in that time period. And from time to time, I'll think of, you know, a moment that I want to just go and watch. And that stuff to me does make having the Impact Plus library worth it. But there's so much more stuff as we see with, you know, another company's uh, over-the-top streaming service that shall remain nameless, that you can put a lot of different stuff on an app like that. You know, like you can put the pay-per-view shows on there. Like I, I maintain that if you, you know, if if Impact is doing oh five thousand pay-per-view buys, right? Uh, at at you know whatever forty dollars or whatever. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure if you have you know people just subscribing to the subscribing to the app, you'll make that money. You know, you'll make that money back. You know what I mean? Like uh, WWE cannibalized its pay-per-view model um, for for the you know for the life of the app. But to me, it's a smart thing, right? It's a smart thing to do, right? If you can just get people going to your app, um, because these you know these Impact Plus specials, they're okay, they're okay, but they're certainly not must see, right? Like there's nothing there's nothing on those Impact Plus specials that I have to see. There's been some good stuff, but nothing I feel like I have to see. Um, you know, I joke all the time about the one they did where they, <laughs> they were broadcasting from John Matthew's phone and yeah. he takes his phone. He's like, I need my phone. <laughs> like, yo, I'm like, oh my God, man. Like just how, you know, how, how poorly can you represent yourself as a company? But, um, but yeah, so I'm like, you know, they're doing a special and I'm like, are there going to be fans there? Is there anything about this that I need to see? Because an Eddie Edwards, Eric Young rematch, that's not enough to get me to go in my pocket for nothing. I'm not going to lie to you. So um, I hope there's more, right? I hope there's more because that alone is not going to be strong enough to get me to subscribe to this app, uh, to resubscribe to this app. Because I did subscribe to it, but you know, it just, it, there was just no value in it for me, even for eight bucks. You know what I mean? Even for eight bucks a month, there just was no value in it for me. So yeah. let me, let me, let me flip this back to a question for you. Ooh. Is the return of Impact Plus specials enough to get you to resubscribe to this app? Well, I, I still, I've never unsubscribed to it. I still pay for I've always paid for it. Oh, okay. Um, oh, Okay. I, for me, though, the Impact Plus specials are always far and beyond better than the, the Twitch ones. And uh, I, I, I know, you know, it's probably a, a revenue thing, obviously, but the Twitch shows are bad. More often than not, those are bad. The Impact Plus ones are, are very much stepped up. I think if – I know I put this challenge out to you a couple of weeks ago, and then I'd even follow through with it myself, so we need to – uh, but I, I said I wanted us to both watch the couple of explosion episodes that had uh, Matt Striker calling it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, do it. If he called the Impact Plus shows, I think uh, I'm not saying it would, you know, boost the success of the app, but I think people would be a little more excited to tune in because sometimes you just need a different voice, and it's. You know, you can even look at the Impact Lounge, for, an ins- for instance. You know, back in the day, I started with the, you know, Kyle and Will. And then then I was doing solo. And then I brought in Ro and Adam. And then uh, the TNI guys came in. And now I have you and I have um, Lewis here on the channel. Like, I only have so much of a vocabulary. I only have so many adjectives. I only have so many... Um, so many viewpoints that you know if it's just me and i'm not switching things up you're just hearing the same stuff and that's not exciting 
you know, and, and that's, that's kind of what I get when right. I'm watching the impact plus shows. Like I, it's, it's no different than an episode of impact. It's just work. Like, I don't mean like impacts bad, but I'm mean, just saying it's worse. Like it's, it's, uh, you know, the same commentary with matches that mean nothing. And then they try to polish some of them up. Like, well, there's a world title match. We know the title's not, we know Eddie's not going to win the title at this show. It's, impossible for him to win i've been wrong before but i'm will bet my testicles that he is not going to win the title and you know <laughs> insert him and then, then he's going to take on rich swan about for glory like i know that's not going to happen it's it feels like we're just getting eddie's title shot out of the way but um i'd be more inclined to make sure i watch the impact plus, impact plus shows if we didn't have the twitch ones too like for me that's too much uh, I can focus on one a month, but focusing on two a month is, is is kind of a lot for me. But I mean, I'm kind of excited for them. They were they were starting to get better. They they first when they first started doing them, they sucked. And, and it's not so much the wrestling; it was the audio, the video. You know, the Twitch streams used to have three, four thousand people watching, and then it got to the point it was like a thousand because people just got tired of the you know the technical problems and they've stepped them up a lot the venues look better you know it's a better it, the shows are better now but but yeah i've always subscribed i've never i've never unsubscribed. um let me ask you a question how crucial is it to you that or is it not crucial at all that at some point impact integrates fans back into this product it's very crucial. Um, I, and I wouldn't even say fans because I've talked about this a little bit before, but something, some kind of, you, you got on the very first time we podcasted together when we started doing this, you said, you know, uh, you're, you were interested to see what their take on empty arena wrestling was going to be. Because you said, you know, everyone's doing it. Everyone's, mm -hmm. everyone's has a clean slate. Everyone's on the same level. And then you look about you look at the right the other shows, and they're all stepping it up. And like with us, we're just getting the same when we watch this the same empty arena show. So I think they need some kind of life in there. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't matter if you're watching the WNBA or you're watching WWE. Like someone, every company has had some kind of. Uh, original i uh spin on it and th this is literally the only company yeah. i hate saying that word literally th this is the only company that just hasn't they just haven't put a, a a different spin on it like it was okay for a little while but now you know i, I think they need something um i believe on the press pass that they did the other day that they don't invite me to anymore they they said uh I think I think it was Josh. Josh is always on there, right? That he, they have some something planned, but it wouldn't be in time for Bound for Glory. I'm like, of course not. Why? I mean, why would it be for Bound for Glory? Mm. I mean, uh, obvious obvious sarcasm there. Like, yeah. you, you know, yeah, that, that that's really interesting to me. I mean, like, um, yeah, like you said, you know, everyone else, you know, every other live entertainment. Uh, you know, league or whatever what you want to call it, has found some way to integrate fans back into the show. Um, you know, obviously everyone can't afford to do what the NBA does. Um, you know, you see in the NFL, just some <laughs> some stadiums just like F it. You know what I mean? We're just going to yeah. let some people in here. Uh, even college football, same thing, right? I watched the game at – I think it was Marshall, which is in West Virginia, and they had half the damn stadium in there. I was like, whoa. Uh, where you live in Illinois, where are they at in terms of the reopening phase? So Illinois actually is very, very low when it comes to, to the COVID-19 threat. It's, it's one of the higher states only because it's, it's a hot thing in Chicago. Uh, but I don't live anywhere near Chicago. I live mm -hmm. like five hours south. We're, where I live, we consider ourselves Missouri almost. Um, and Missouri is a little hotter. Yeah. But, but in my area of Illinois, 
it, it's not bad. But if you're talking about Missouri, you know, we got the Cardinals and stuff there. Uh, you know, they're not they're not moving along to to you know too well there. Um, but I'd say we're we're kind um, of in the middle of the pack. The reason but. why I ask is because. I live in Connecticut and, you know, the governor's announced this week that they were going to be moving to phase three, which is, you know, some of the things is like, you know, um, 50% capacity at like indoor entertainment venues, which is huge, right? That's huge. So like, um, you know, and there's, there's still, you know, it's getting colder, but you know, things like amphitheaters, right? Like, like, um, where AEW tapes their show is an amphitheater. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very, like if you guys ever get to see the camera views of that, of that venue, they basically put the ring up against the stage and rest of it around there is basically, you know, it's a, it's, it's the seating, you know what I mean? Like that would be an outdoor concert. So um, there's venues like that all over the country. I think that would be a great choice for now, again, we're talking that we're getting into like winter months, but um, you know, there's a lot of choices. There's a lot of options. Like I said, some states are now. Connecticut is in the low end of of uh, of, of of COVID cases in terms of like having it under control and stuff like that. So it makes more sense that you know Connecticut will be opening up you know the venues to higher capacities and things like that, but. There's different places all over the country. Like I just mentioned, places where I'm seeing these college football games, and a lot of them have a lot of fans in the stands. You know, there's a lot of places you can get some people out there. So, you know, Impact, what are you waiting for, man? What are you waiting for? you got to integrate fans into these shows. To me, that's going to be the most exciting thing to see is when you guys can get some fans at your show. And I, I think it will inject a whole new life in your product. I just think that just has to happen as soon as possible. Yeah, because it's, it's lifeless right now. I mean, there's no soul to it. it it's totally lifeless. And, man, I remember uh, the first game of the NFL season, I thought the the crowd was piped in. And I was like, man, my girlfriend are watching. I'm like, damn, it's, it sounds like there's people there. And then it's you know, zooms out, and there, there are people there. Uh, you know, there was like 5,000 people yeah. there. So, uh, But it made such a difference. Like something, something. It's, it's, it's just hard to believe they can't do anything. And I, I guess, you know, that's what someone told me because I didn't check out the press pass that they said we got some, we're working on something. So I will give it a benefit of the doubt that they got something, something coming. But um, right now it's relying too much on the commentary. And I think that's what's, what's killing it a little yeah. bit too. And speaking of the press pass, you brought the press pass. Uh, I, I I watch a lot of it, and one thing that I noticed was there was a lot of media there from um, what appeared to be like the Europe UK uh, area, and that just told me that they need to bring back that Maximum Impact tour. They need to bring that back because, in all honesty, they got a much better chance of packing the O2 Arena than they do the Sears Center in Chicago. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it is what it is. Um, you know, the American wrestling fans look at Impact, you know, as third rate at best in terms of, you know, market share. But I'm not so sure that people view them that low uh, in places like the UK. And so I think they need to bring back that tour. Yeah, man, they, they've been do. They've been do visiting the, the UK for a while, and I'm sure that um, you know financially not feasible to an extent. But I mean, you also know that they they're gonna do great numbers out there uh, at the gates. So um, it's interesting, but but it is it is time that they when everything cools down. I mean that that is a market that they need to reattack because really impact was ahead of the curve with the UK. They really were. They were. They were trying to appeal to the UK audience when, you know, WWE could give two shits about the UK, and then you know, the UK became the hotbed, and everyone got on it. And right around the impact, the time Impact really couldn't afford to go back out there. So it, it would be nice, man. It'd be it'd be really nice to see it. it. Sometimes they show this Impact Plus stuff, like they, they kicked off the Impact in '60 
I, I haven't watched it yet, and this is the only one I'm going to watch because it's the only one that has has any, I have any interest in. But uh, the one they're doing EC3, they started off with EC3 and Spud, and I mean it was, man, those UK shows were packed. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And exact. And to me, see, uh, I, I understand it has to be. It's probably expensive to fly your crew out there. Um, you know, you got to the venue, but I think that it's one of those things where you might take a loss, but I think what you, what you do is you go out there and you film two months of TV and now you have two months of TV of people in America seeing your product in front of a hot crowd. And I yeah. think that makes a big difference in the way the American fan views your, your product, right? Like, I mean, honestly, I'd go out there and take three months of TV. If you can uh, if you find a way to afford to do it, Anthem's not broke. They just bought the damn uh, HD network or whatever it's called, right? So, like, uh, I think the, the, there's an investment that can be made in the product where, like I said, you know, go out there, do, you know, some sort of residency where you find a way to get three months of TV in the can, and sh then you have three months of your product in front of you know packed houses with lively fans to show to the american wrestling fans and then the next time you do a show in america you'll have more enthusiastic fans is is that crazy to think that way <laughs> no it's not it's not crazy again again i'm sure it comes down to funding and all that but no uh, the the general idea of it you know sounds like something that makes a lot of sense something that would that would work uh, I remember they did a one night only back. This is good. Two and a half years ago, three years ago, whatever. And you know, that's back when they pieced the one night only through random, um, random matches because you know, I, I had been to the impact zone in Orlando a couple of times and in the beginning or the end or in the middle, they would record a random one night only match. And uh, I remember watching this one night only and uh, you would have one match that was in front of this hot UK crowd. And then they would go to the next match. It was at the impact zone with 200 people. <laughs> I was like, man, this yeah, is awful. Crazy. <laughs> Just the way they were, you know, mixing them together. So, you know, what I've noticed was really weird. We always used to say, damn, those, that impact zone was dead. Um, and I, I've got on here many times saying in person, it's not as dead as it sounded on TV. Um, but if you look back, sometimes they do these flashback matches, and I'm like, those crowds sound better than the ones now. In, in some case, yeah. not not every case, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it, it's it's almost like it just keeps getting worse. Um, you know, I think it's one of those weird things where we own we 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 tend to we we tend to take things for granted. Um, like while they're right in front of us. I was thinking about this the other day, um, even in terms of, you know, like, you know, WWE fans, you know, WWE fans shit it on WWE so hard in 2014, 2015 when Reigns was coming up. Uh, like, you know, fans revolted. And it, but if you look at this product now, oh my God, people <laughs> would kill for the days of, of of, of booing Roman Reigns for winning the Royal Rumble. Um, same thing with Impact, right? Like, you know, when Impact was 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 on Spike TV, everybody was, why can they only do a million viewers? AEW <laughs> would cut its nuts off to do a million viewers a week consistently. And TNT has more reach than Spike TV does, or right around there. Right? Yeah. So, you know, I, I think it's one of those things, like, you know, we just appreciate stuff when we have it. Um, but like, yeah, like, you know, I think about this all the time. I have, I, I understand, I understand the necessity in taking impact on the road, but to me, I don't know, man. Like I'll take the, I, 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 I'll take the, the, the Universal Studios soundstage over the half empty Sam Sound Casino any day. Um, I just think that like, you know, I thought that, you know, again, going back to, 
you know, the days when they were doing – I remember Jeff Hardy came out for a match one time in the Impact Zone and Rick Ross was in the audience giving them high fives. Like, the, you know, Impact had hot product at one time, man. And right there in the Impact Zone where everybody would complain about, you know, oh, there's just tourists and all this other stuff. I was like, man, I, that, that show was so much better lit. Um, it yeah. sounded better. You know, like, to me, I thought the Impact Zone was a much better production value than a lot of the places they go to now. I really like when they go to um, that, 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 that college in Canada. Saint yeah, when, College. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they do good. Yeah, they do good TV from there. They get good crowds. Uh, they're good. Uh, that place where they, um, that look like a giant, like, cow warehouse that they did bound for glory years ago um <laughs> do you know what i'm talking about it was like someplace in canada yeah yeah where they went and um and yeah 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 and they, they i mean that place actually looked good when they did it up for the show um e yo even even when they used to go do the um the casino in 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 pennsylvania what was it oh um, to go to some casino in Pennsylvania film TV. Um, yeah, tip of my tongue. Urgh, the name escapes me right now. Yeah, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And like right now, wouldn't you love to have shows that look like that? Um, it, when they when they filmed in New York. Now I've heard that it's prohibitively expensive to film in New York, but. I really like the production value of those small venues with with active lively fans um i again from a business standpoint i understand the necessity of taking the show on the road but i thought i've, I've always thought you know why not do you know tape a month at the impact zone and then go on the road and tape a month somewhere. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. uh, a month of the impact zone, then a month somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like just to keep, you know, because like, cause it's a crap shoot, bro. Like if you plan, if you commit, we're doing Sam's town casino and then you don't get a house at Sam's town casino, you still got to do two months of TV in front of 300 people. You know what I mean? Yeah. 300 people in a place that looks like a high school gymnasium. Right. You know, at least like at the impact zone, they can, you know, they have good lighting and, you know, they can, they can, you know, rejigger the, the seating to get everybody on the hard camera side. Like there was a lot of advantages to the impact zone. I, I really don't know what was a, any good reason for relocating from there. Well, I mean, it, it was, you know, they were yeah, way making, off. Yeah, we way <laughs> off, uh, but they weren't making any money in Orlando. I mean, that, that that's the thing. And uh, I haven't talked about this in a real long time, but I used to talk about it quite a bit because since I'd been to Orlando a few times, to me, my, my experience, it was that it was a misconception that there was all tourists there because there were some in there, but where the impact zone was located was not really in the park. Like it was on the park property, but it wasn't like next to the rides. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like you couldn't get off a ride and then go watch wrestling. I mean, it was, right, right, right. it was its own area uh, by some restaurants and, and things like that. It, it really wasn't that close to the. Yeah. I, I love universal studios. Every time I go to Florida, I, you know, I, I always do a night at city walk. I love, I, I really love it there. Um, so I've you, always wanted to go to an impact taping, but at no point uh, when I've gone to Florida has there actually been an impact set taping? That's but did you see where? Luck. Do you know where the impact zone was though? It, it like the I've, big so so every time I go there, I look for where the sound stages are, and I have an idea. But I, but it's it's like it's like away from the park. Right, right. It was next to the Blue Man Group um, sound stage, which was really really big. But okay, that's why I say it was a misconception. I mean, if, if I'm going to spend a day at a theme park and it's not cheap to buy a, a universal ticket, like you don't buy a universal ticket to get to the impact zone. Um, if I, if I was going at a, Hell theme, no. right. Hell no. And, and if I was going to a theme park for an entire day, 
I wouldn't go and if I wasn't a wrestling fan, like, hey, let's go watch wrestling for four hours. You know, that doesn't, it doesn't happen. Are like 90 bucks. Right, right. So, yes, there were a few tourists in there, but, you know, for the most part, it was, it was just regulars who had seen it so much that they were sitting on their hands a lot of the time. But, you know, my experiences there is that I always spoke to wrestling fans. I, I one time spoke to a tourist. She was from out of, out of the country she was with her boyfriend and they were super engaged in the show even though they didn't know what was going on so i don't know we're so we're so far off track right. here but you know um let's get into <laughs> 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 definitely a longer show today let's uh let's talk the rock real quick i i did an upload on this with uh you know i i do there was a point i wanted to make you're right about not appreciating stuff when we have it because i remember complaining about pope and josh on commentary and now when I listen back at them, I'm like, dude, that commentary was, was great. Like, I would love to have that back, especially, especially Pope. But even right. Josh, Josh back then was, was a lot better, had a lot more fire in his voice. I get now he loses his voice. So now he, you know, talks high pitch and doesn't yell. I get that. But yeah, back then, man, it, it was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty killer. I have uh, to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So I feel bad uh, looking back. I feel foolish uh, complaining about that, but um, I did upload uh, upload on this. Ken Shamrock's being inducted into the Hall of Fame. He on Twitter asked, and you just saw this before we start recording. He asked The Rock to do an introductory video for him. So it seems like people are excited about this. Uh, you know, the only thing I want to say is that there, there's people on social media saying that The Rock should show up in person, and. Uh, you know, my response was he probably charges more for an appearance than impact profits in a year. In, in all honesty, you know, not trying to be humorous or anything like that, but if we're being like real and he's not going to show up for free. So, um, you know, if this guy's making $25 million to do a movie, uh, it, you know, his, his time is worth something. So uh, I, I, I'm almost willing to bet he makes more for just an appearance than you know what I'm saying? Then they probably profit in a year. So uh, I, I'm not expecting the rock to be there, but I think it's a cool moment. It'll be a cool moment to see something from him for that, you know? Yeah. Um, the, the thing is though, like, so the rock does not work for WWE. However, right. Like um, he's, he's it. When I was, um, Gosh, years ago, when I was fresh out of grad school, peddling my wares, uh, uh, trying to find somewhere to work, uh, I had an interview for an internship at WWE, and I went uh, into the into the building. And um, it, long story short, there's a signed, framed photograph of The Rock on the executive floor as soon as you come out of the lobby, uh, excuse, as soon as you come out of the elevator. And, um, you know, it, it has like a, a message, like, you know, to the McMahon family, you know, I love you so much, yada, 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 all stuff. I said all that just to say, The Rock is, he's, he's in good. He has a good relationship with the McMahons, right? Like he would not, he would not appear on the program of, impact wrestling without Vince's blessing, um, which he would never give. Uh, I, I, well, I'd never say never, but, um, but we, I doubt he would give, but again, you know, the rock does not work. WWE. He does not have to ask Vince's permission to do anything, but I think something like this, if he were to, you know, just do a video you know, send in a video inducting Ken Shamrock into the impact hall of fame, um, even that right feels a little bit like you see Vince raising an eyebrow to it. No pun intended, but I, uh, but still I could, I, you know, it's not that it's not the same thing as like appearing on an impact show, because if, if the rock was going to appear on an impact show, then you are doing business for impact. And you're pretty much, I'm not saying that you're saying you would never take money from WWE again, but Vince would be offended and somewhat rightly so, right? Like the rock is to this day, one of the biggest draws 
WWE could pull out of their pocket. Um, it, the next time that WWE is able to get people in the building for a WrestleMania, I would be willing to bet you anything that The Rock is going to be on that card because he's, like I said, one of the biggest draws they could pull out of their, uh, you, you know, period. Like, they, you know, so The Rock is still a very big deal to WWE. Um, the idea that he would appear at Impact Wrestling for anything is, to me, just like, you know, never say never, but that shit would never happen. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I, I could not see it. I could not see it. Unless, like, they hired his daughter or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless there was some sort of you know, business partnership, if he, if they sold him a stake in the company or something like that, then I could see that happening. But other than that, there is no way he would appear on, you know, on Impact TV. I just I can't see it. I, I will say never. <laughs> I'm going to say never on that one. But <laughs> this kind of leads me to a point too. What is your opinion on Impact having a Hall of Fame period? Um when I did my upload earlier, I made a comment. I said, I always thought the Hall of Fame was a little silly. But at the same time, I was in the house for the Gail Kim one, and it was a really cool moment. But it was cool because she was a, a very legitimate inductee. She was someone that loves the company, someone that wanted to be there. The, in, the induction meant something to her. Uh, you know, the Hall of Fame to me is a little, I would rather they not do it personally just because the people who you need to induct, you can't, you, you know, if you're, you're really getting into the fabric of TNA, you, you can't induct those people and you, you probably never will be able to. So that's kind of my issue with it because they really struggle to find people. I mean, last year we didn't have anyone at all. They, they really struggle. At least it appears to be that way. Struggle to get, you know, names of someone who, would want to be involved who, who would care to be involved you know if you look at team 3d the dudley's like they don't acknowledge you know being inducted they, they barely acknowledge devon won't acknowledge even working for the company period so um i don't know what do you kind of what do you, what are you kind of thoughts on just the whole hall of fame thing as a whole i think they should have a hall of fame i i, I think that uh, i think that um you know, through this company's ups and downs, there's a lot of people who have been riding with this company for a very long time. And I think that having a Hall of Fame establishes that there is an us, there is a we, and we have a history that counts and matters to us, right? Now, having said that, what you said makes so much sense here, which is that, all the people who should be in the Impact Hall of Fame are probably working for WWE right now, right? Like Abyss, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, uh, Christopher Daniels works for uh, AEW, um, Darian as well. Um, you know, like, you know, who else are like the major people? Kurt Angle, I think he's already in. Uh, Bobby Roode. Um, you know, James Storm, like these are the people that when you think of TNA, you think of these people. When you think of the times that you enjoy watching TNA and that you were like, what? How come you guys don't like this? This product's great, right? Like those were the people that you think of and those are the people who deserve to be in their Hall of Fame. Those are the Hall of Famers to us. And that just bringing it full circle brings me back to something that I mentioned a few weeks ago and I feel like is a recurring theme when I talk about and think about how they book this show on a week-to-week -week basis, which is where are our guys? Where are our guys? Where are the people that Impact fans are supposed to look at and think about as our guys? You know, uh, the AEW fans, right? They have the Young Bucks and Cody and Kenny Omega and all that other stuff. Um, I've never been a Ring of Honor watcher, but I'm pretty sure the Ring of Honor people could give you a whole list of people that they think 
are their guys. Um, to a lot of fans, you know, who have never seen anything else, they think everybody's a WWE guy. So the Impact fan, right, like – where are the guys that Impact fans can wrap their, their hands around, wrap their arms around, and say, these are our guys? You know, these are the guys who are going to be the Impact Hall of Famers 10 years from now, right? right. Yeah. Um, and the, the real underlying issue in all of that, right, is like, you know, where does current management see the value in, you know, in, in, in this brand? You know, I, I think that's a legitimate question. I used to always hear Paul Heyman say when he would talk about ECW that when he would use people like Terry Funk, that his idea, his plan was, I'm going to use these people to build up my guys. So I'm going to get this person that, you know, you might know because they were a WCW champion, but I'm going to bring them in here and they're going to do the job to Raven, right? Because Raven is an ECW guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're going to do the job to Sandman because Sandman is the ECW guy. And with Impact, it's been the exact opposite of that, right? Deanna Perazzo, five minutes in the door. She's the champion, still working without a contract. You know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> and so uh, I, I just, you know, I, I think, that's the question that I'm going to have until they start really establishing some people. Now there's a few people, right? Like if I had to think of somebody that I would call an impact guy right now, I think of Moose. I think of Eddie Edwards. I think of Sammy Callahan, but what are those guys doing right now? You know? Right. So that's my take on that. To, 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 I know, I, I know I, 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 I went on a little, but yes, I, there should be a hall of fame because you know, there's a lot of there, there, there's a lot of great history with Impact, but you know, like you said, right? It's like sometimes they even have to check and see who they who they can put in that's not currently under contract with WWE. So you know, they got to get it together. Yeah, I wouldn't say they shouldn't have one because they have a right to acknowledge greatness and acknowledge our history. They absolutely have a right to do that. When I when I say it's silly, it's just because you know, they, we get this impact. I mean, they went right back to this impact plus flash or I, I've been saying it wrong for years. I don't even know what it's called. Flashback, throwback, whatever. They went right back to, to it this episode. And who was it? It was AJ style. Like every time they're like, Hey, check out our library. It, it's the same dudes. And the same dudes are not even guys you can induct. So it's like, for me, that's, it's just a big disconnect. Um, because some of these people who they who they do need to and you know you know who are important to the fabric of the company want nothing to do with the company so it, it just a uh, right it's a it, it, that's why you know I actually have some interest in the uh, the, the former USC player uh, employee um, Ant Evans I think the name was um, that they just uh, he just started working with Impact Wrestling he used to work with UFC he was ingrained in the uh actually i think he was in charge of the the ufc fight pass the app and he is the reason the ufc hall of fame is is structured the way it is right now to this day so he had his fingers in oh really yeah so he had his fingers in the app um and for me to, for, for someone to be on, to work in that large of a scale, um, I think he's a great addition if, if they, you know, if he has anything to do with the Impact Plus app. Like he might be to say, hey, this is, this is the kind of content uh, we, we need to put in here that, that people are going to want to see, you know. Um, and then with the Hall of Fame, you know, he was, he was integral in how that's delivered to this day. So, you know, maybe – Maybe he finds a way to f- make some of these things more interesting uh, or more successful than they are. So I'm excited about that. Let's uh, let's move into another topic here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to talk to Neil Dashwood every single week because I'm in love with this gimmick. <laughs> this is my my new favorite knockout man. Um, overnight, you know, I, I was man just just a few months ago. I was just like, please turn her heel or please. 
I mean, we do just a couple of weeks ago, we were basically complaining about her and you know, that she, she's not promoting impact. Now all of a sudden she has this gimmick that she clearly loves. And now she's freaking promoting impact on Twitter and doing all the things that we want to see, you know, because she's doing something she genuinely loves and it freaking works and they're, they're doing it so perfect. The only thing I would change is, is the, the jumbotron entry, you know, the, the big screen I would, I would have instead of just flashing to Neil Dashwood, I would have photos and, you know, photo shoot type of thing. I would just change her music cause I hate her music with passion. Um, you know, so there's some things I would tighten up with, but I mean, the delivery, the, 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 the backstage stuff that, they did before the match and she did the Instagram quote again. And uh, when she came out and Caleb is, you know, using his phone and then dude, he's killing it too, where he's, he keeps it with a K and then, you know, she said, Mr. Conley or whatever goes, Oh, that's also with a K, but just call me Caleb. I mean, he, he's overnight more interesting. Uh, I love everything I'm freaking about this dude. And this was the main event and she won. We're getting this match again next week. Uh, which is probably going to be Jordan Grace's like fourth loss in a row, which is crazy. Cause again, Oof. we're talking about our guys, you know, and our girls and she's just, uh, she was pretty much unbeatable. And now you're bringing in former WWE people and she's losing, um, which is crazy. But so I had to get that off my chest about Tennille. Uh It's my, so far been my favorite part of the show every single week, anything on Tennille and Caleb with a K. Yeah. Listen, I think you're spot on with the stuff you said about it. I I love how, you know, they'll do like the little cut-ins in the show where they'll just, they'll be like uh, flashing pictures of her. And like, you can tell they're clearly like pictures that were just taken on the phone. And it's just like her with her hand on her, on her head, then hand, her hand behind her head. Then she turns to the side and then she's pouting. And then she's got her hands, you know, like, <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, I just, I just, I love it. I just think it's, it's a fun way to present her. Um, and yes, she's actually tweeting about impact wrestling. I saw the impact tweeted that there's going to be a rematch between um, Tennille and Jordan and Tennille tweeted, why I already beat her. Right. <laughs> I was like, that's funny because that's the same thing we're saying. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Like I just, I just, I, I, I think that is good. Clearly she's engaged, like you said, um, and you know, the talent's going to work the gimmick more when they enjoy the gimmick more, right? Like that makes sense, right? You see all these people that, you know, work certain places and they just lose their passion for the, for the business because the place beats it out of them. And so it's nice to see a company doing the opposite, right? Breathing passion back into people. I think she kind of mentioned something about that. She said that, you know, when you saw that she was, that the impact was signing all those people, it made her want to, you know, come get back into the mix. And so that's good, right? That's, that's it. It says that, you know, impacts putting it out there that this is kind of the place to be in a lot of ways. And so I think that's a good thing. You know what I mean? Like that speaks very well to impact wrestling's reputation amongst, uh, you know, people in the business. So, you know, I, I like what she's doing. Um, Jordan Grace is losing matches like she just signed a long-term contract with Impact. Um, <laughs> you know, she needs to let her deal get close to expire and then put the title back on her. Um, I just don't really, you know, it's, uh, that's just, that's apparently how they do. It's a weird strategy, man. It is a weird strategy. On one hand, I get it because you have to build people up. I get that. But there's a way to do it without just blowing the equity that you that that people have already built up you know what i'm saying right like again jordan was just like four matches ago jordan was the world champion <laughs> you know now she can't win right um, right uh you know i just uh, there there has to be a better way people there has to be a better way you know and i i do get it if you if you look at sports i love to compare wrestling to like sports if you're going to bring in a free agent, there's going to be some promises. You're going to be like, Hey, you're going to get X amount of playing time. You're going to start. Uh, there's always promises. And sometimes it's, 
going to be at the expense of the people that are already there. But it makes sense. It, it just makes sense. That's just the name of the game. Like, hey, we want you to sign here. We've got to make these promises to you. But it's, you know, the way they do it with the knockouts but is like, you, you okay, come in so, and you're so, the so, – uh-huh. One, one way that NXT does this so well is they will have like so 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 here's the here's an example. Instead of taking Tanil and having her beat Jordan on TV three times in a row, so Jordan doesn't freaking matter anymore. It looks like she can't win a match. Well, then you pile that onto her two losses in a row to Diana Perazzo. Instead of doing that, have Tanil beat Kimberly. Right, then have her beat Susie, right? Then have her uh you know, then have her beat uh beat beat Kiara Hogan, right? Like, um, and that's no disrespect to any of those people, but thus far, impact has not told us that any of these people are strong, right? They haven't been presented as strong, so it would make sense that you feast off of the lower card first, right. Then you build up some equity. Let us let us get to see your move set. Let us, you know, get to get to hate you a little bit. Then when you put her in the ring with the former knockouts champ, it feels like a big match, right? Like to it, I don't think this is that hard. These people have been all these people, Don Callis, Scott Demore, D'Lo Brown, everybody else backstage have been doing wrestling for a long time right? They understand the concept of building to a match. And you don't, everything that have to be for the title for it to matter. You just got to take your time and, and, and make it matter. Yeah, man. Um, we're we're talking about crazy. Yeah. Like think about Tennille when she first joined the company, she, she comes in and beats, I think Madison rain off the bat. And then she beats, Kira Hogan, and then she beats both of them in the same match. We're talking about the whole one on two thing. It was a triple threat, but it was it was one on two, dude. That's not the way to to bring someone in either. Uh, just have steam, you know, steamroll their top talent. Um, but yeah, even even when Tennille debuted this new gimmick, man, why wasn't she wrestling someone else first? Or uh, doing an enhancement match. I mean, she, they they threw her right into Jordan Grace, and then she's wrestling her again. So I can't imagine they're going to fight at Bound for Glory, unless Bound for Glory is going to be a bunch of rematches. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm I'm still just so into the gimmick that uh, I'm digging it, uh, and I just I just every week want to see what she is doing next. Another knockout that never wins is uh Kimberly and she's she's looked really good <laughs> in defeat like even though she loses every match she's looked good in defeat um she she's she's very talented she uh I used to be a big Kimber Bombs fan back in the day her and her and uh Cherry Bomb Alley and then uh you know I guess I I sour I sour on anyone that goes to NXT I know you like NXT but I've I, I stopped liking that product when it stopped being developmental. Um, so I kind of, I, I don't know. I, I lost interest in her and then she came back and she's, she's really been good. And it bothers me that she keeps losing. Like I, she even lost to Susie, which is crazy because Susie doesn't beat anybody. I think she's even lost to Susie twice basically. Cause they had the tag team match. And I knew I knew she was going to lose this match because she had offense for ninety five percent of it, and that's always how it works. Mm. When it's like this one sided match, they end up losing, which uh, drives me nuts. But um, I don't know if you got anything to, to say on Kimberly, but that was just something that I picked up on this episode. I'm like, dude, she's not going to lose again. Come on, you know. Uh, I'm very impressed with with her so far, um, and I lo- I love Susie quite a bit. And we were talking about this offline where I think it's like we know the Sue Young character in some way, shape, or form is coming back, but I feel like Josh Matthews is telling a story that's not there. Like, I feel like Susie is just going to go back and forth between Sue Young 
to enhance her character, but that's just my opinion. I don't see a full like 180 where she just returns as Sue Young because the Sue Young character has a shelf life. And Josh is basically making it sound like, oh, when when is Sue Young gonna gonna come back? You know, I just feel like he's jumping the gun with this story a little bit. I know you don't totally agree with that, but you know. Yeah, you know, I mean like so I feel like the the the, the thing is like I feel like we all knew that Su Young was coming back. Like that was the only end game to this story, right? Like there, to me there was never another outcome for the Susie story, right? Like so I feel like we all kind of knew that was coming. I think the problem is in how they built it, right? Like there's been like periodic moments where Susie would do a, a glimpse of Young, right? But it, it's been kind of start and stop. Like they would do it and then they would just get away from it from, for such a long time that now when they're coming back, but it's like, oh yeah, Susie is Su Young. Cool. Right? Like, you know what I mean? Like when they, when they first did it, I was like, you know, first of all, I was like floored because, uh, that is a fine, fine woman. Oh, and yeah. you would not know that by, you know, by just seeing her in that makeup. It's crazy. Um, and, and, and yeah, so, so there was like that initial shock to it. But then <clears throat> it just got to a point where Susie was such a weak character, right, that you stopped caring. And, and, it, and it went on for so long that you stopped even thinking about Sue Young. So it's like now you're trying to, you're trying to, to get us back interested in the fact that Sue Young's coming back. But it's like we almost forgot about Sue Young. Like right, I, right. I, I, that's the real problem. She's been gone for so long and you haven't been teasing it that now, when, now that you are starting to tease it, it's like, is that still a thing? Right, right. Having her associated with Kylie Ray has actually helped breathe a, breathe a little more life in that character because it felt like where the hell were you possibly going to go with it? But I like that they they challenged her to uh, to repackage. Um, I don't want to focus on Susie too much. There's something I uh, I forgot I wanted to talk about, and I, I brought this up the other day. I want to talk about this whole Heath thing. So the Heath video <laughs> yeah. package that they did here i actually thought was genuinely funny i the other ones i'm kind of like not so much this one i found a lot of really genuine humor in it uh when he when his daughter said can we get a pool and he looks at the camera i don't know can we i mean hilarious like some of this shit <laughs> is really good at first i was like wow they got you know, uh, who are some of the names? They had Nancy Kerrigan, uh, Chuck Norris, who I haven't, I don't yeah, recognize Flav him Flav. at this point, Flavor Flav. And then I forgot who the first one was, David Hasselhoff. You, you know where this, <laughs> yeah. you know where this gets a thumbs down from me is that at the bottom of the where? screen, it had cameo on there. And it was clear that they just paid the money for the cameos. These they just paid no for all the <laughs> These people, right, they have no clue what Impact Wrestling is, you know, because I didn't watch, you know, I never watch a show as it airs, and I saw people saying, well, David Hasselhoff, I was like, really? No way. And then I saw, and then, um, what, did I say Zoom? Or what are they called? Cameo. 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 Did I say Cameo? I, I feel I felt like I said Zoom. Maybe. Yeah, you said Cameo. Okay, okay, okay. It's because I'm staring at no. the Zoom. <laughs> And it was like, dude, if it didn't say cameo at the bottom of the screen, it would have been like, oh, sh you know, that would have really <laughs> been really cool. Um, but I was thinking about this. If he is not signed to the company, he's getting a lot of screen time. And you have this like hacker character, uh, ca hacker gimmick with Sammy Callahan. But it seems like everybody's either hacking the show or, you know, Kind of like when EC3 closed Sam Slimeversary and they're like, he's not even signed here. Like, how the hell is he to run has a video package then? And that's what I feel with the Heath stuff. Like, Heath for Impact, Heath has to sign with Impact. Well, why is he why are you giving him 
a commercial on your show if he's not part of your company. I mean, it, it's I like the stuff. I'm just saying I wish they would do a whole social media campaign with it instead of doing it on television because that that at least would be – like he's clearly signed at the company. We know that as fans. Uh, well, actually, we probably don't know that because it feels like no one's signed anymore. But I, I do you understand what I'm saying? Like to me, if this the dude is not signed with the company – why does he get a, an ad on your show every single week? Like, is he, is he buying, buying the ad space, which is possible because as much as well, we yeah, that, call Holly the Robinson Pete and when all that first is, came up. That's when, they, how, when they first did it on locker room talk, uh-huh. it was, it was, uh, it was, it was presented as he bought the ad space. Okay. 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 Then, then I take all that back that then that makes sense. And it can't cost that much because as much as we see Holly Robinson, Pete and all that uh, throughout the show and the, on the commercials, like clearly, it, clearly the ads don't cost a whole lot. Uh, just looking at the, the, the quality of commercials we watch. Um, so yeah, that makes sense then that makes sense. But, but I will say this, this one was genuinely funny. Uh, it did make me laugh, but We've, we've talked about it before and other podcasts will talk about it, like recycling the gimmick. Um, I think they're beating. He has kids to death. Uh, that was the last episode of Monday night raw I ever watched. It was that when he was um, in the ring with Brock Lesnar, he's like, I got kids. And Brock said, I don't give a shit about your kids. And then it, it blew up. It turned into something, but uh, I feel like they're really beating it to death. So um, I don't know. You got any, got any, thoughts on the heat thing i'm glad you cleared that up because yes now that i, now I that do not sense. man honestly like Heath was Heath was one of the uh he was one of the people that popped up at at, at slammiversary that i was really unexcited about um i mean that said <clears throat> i think that you know i think they've done they've done well they've done well with heath i i i'm i'm enjoying what they're doing with him on tv um it's like, like I said earlier, you know, I want impact to be for impact fans, but I also totally 100% understand it. You have to live in the reality of the world that most wrestling fans know WWE first. And it, it, it makes sense to, if you're going to use somebody who already got a built-up audience because they were on WWE TV for years, it makes sense to play off of that. Me, uh, again, I'm someone who didn't grow up with WWE as, WWE as my primary product, so it's not my frame of reference for everything wrestling. You know what I mean? And so it annoys me when I see that it is. But you also have to, again, you got to live in reality. Most current fans... WWE is their frame of reference for wrestling. So, you know, so, so that's why they, they're doing the, they're playing him with Rhino where he was, who was his partner in WWE. They're, you know, talking about, I got kids. Cause that was his gimmick in WWE. They're still calling him Heath. I don't know if that's his real name. Probably not. It right? is. It's but a, this, it is. Oh, actually, you know, I think Heath is his real name. His real name is Heath Miller. I think. Yeah, right. Correct. Like correct. Yeah. Uh, so, oh yeah, so, you know, but they're, they're, they're still calling him, you know, that, you know what I mean? Because that's the same thing they call him on WWE TV. So I get it, but, you know, it made it less interesting to me. Um, where conversely, right, like Brian Myers, I think that he's actually getting to, you know, show some personality, which he never did on WWE TV. And that makes him more interesting. It makes him more of a new character to me. So... Um, so I think the stuff they're doing with Heath is fine. It's not bad, you know. Um, I actually didn't catch the cameo on all the videos. <laughs> I was sitting here thinking about stuff like, wow, these people must know him from WWE TV. <laughs> but <laughs> once you mentioned the cameo, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just just an oversight, you know what I mean? I feel like uh, there's probably no need for that logo on there because they – probably purchased the cameo so it's i don't think they're required to put the you know it's their property i, I don't know it, it's possible that it has to be on there but 
Um, that's just something I picked up on. And um, also the fact that his name is just Heath. I know that WWE started this like single name thing. I think it is horrible branding mm-hmm. to do that. I mean, um, little known facts, guys. Uh, TW here does work on, on, on the set of first take on ESPN. And you know this, Stephen A. Smith is Stephen A. Smith because that's branding. He's not Stephen Smith. He's not Steve Smith because that's that's just a name. You know, Stephen A. Smith, yeah. that's, that's branding. We all know he's not. They call him Stephen A., you know. And, and, right. and when, when I hear these, like, when, when, uh, when someone's like a normal name and it's a common name, Dude, that's that's horrendous branding because that you can never be a household name, j- just like that. It's, uh, I don't I don't like it. I've never liked it. And you know, obviously, with, since I have a passion with marketing and stuff like that, it, from a branding standpoint, that like drives me nuts when someone, uh, even if I don't, I don't even watch WWE, but when I when I saw uh, that. Um, I, Ali, Ali, I'm sorry, I say Ali. Um, Ali got changed to just Ali from what he used to be. Uh, Mustafa Ali. Yeah, dude, that's that's a brand that you you can work with. That that's brand. You can brand that name. You can't just brand Ali. Well, there's some other factors at play there that I don't want to get into. Okay, 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 fair enough. Fair enough, but yeah, man. Um, we'll move on from that. Another guy that. We saw Slam Reversary, and he just when we just uh, brought him up was Brian Myers, and as you said, this was a classic case of fighting over nothing that will probably lead to a Bound for Glory match, kind of like we were talking about Moose and Rhino uh, when they had the un just ridiculous backstage run in that somehow led to a feud. Like, do, right. you, do you feel like this? And is- <laughs> Brian Myers. And Tommy Dreamer, oh my God, man. If you guys saw the show this week, you know what it was. But it's been right. Like, this is the classic example of, oh, I need something to do. And it, you know what? You know what <laughs> this was? I bet you him and Tommy Dreamer talked this out two minutes. Him, Tommy Dreamer, and Mean Gia, who got a wagon, by the way, if y'all haven't noticed. <laughs> but <laughs> sorry, um, uh, Tommy Beamer, um, Brian Myers, and Mean Gia. Uh, I bet you they talked this segment out five minutes before they cut it. They were like, yo, we need something for Brian Myers to do. Um, uh, Tommy's like, I got an idea. And <laughs> they just they just did it. Like, it was just so, you know, kind of off the cuff. And um, – which again, and I say this every time, this, if you look at the art of it, right, this speaks to the brilliance of Tommy Dreamer that he can pull this off. This speaks to his expertise at being a pro wrestling performer that he can pull something like this off. I just have no interest of seeing him on my TV. I just don't. I just don't. Um, but it's something for Brian Myers to do. And going back to what we were talking about, about Tennille Dashwood, they're allowing you more and more time to get used to Brian Myers, to his, to his good and his bad, to learn to hate him so that when you do put him, listen, I, this, this, this might feel like a reach, but I feel like Brian Myers is going to be impact world champion. Dude, I think I'm not saying soon, right, right. but but I, I, I just, I, 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 I don't see a lot of flaws in his game. Yeah, like I see he can wrestle. I, mm-hmm. I think his ring gear is a little stupid. Yeah. But, um, but he can talk. You know what I mean? I think you just got to build the character. I think he's going to be Impact World Champion. At some point. I, I feel like they have plans for him. I, 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 I see that. I was thinking that's similar, that something similar, that there's just no holes to him. Like when he was talking to Tommy, I mean, he was, he was believable. Um, they really made a stupid segment actually come out kind of cool. I mean, uh, you know, they, they did a good job. D- do you know the meme I'm talking about where it shows someone slamming the, the, the button, the red button. It's like, uh, I made this yeah. me- meme a while ago, actually. Um, impact creative needs a, needs a storyline, needs a random storyline. And then it just shows them 
slamming the red button, Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I don't. I don't think it's going to be a bound. I think they're both going to be in the uh, gauntlet if they if that's what they do. But um, but Brian Myers is doing some good work. I'm I, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm kind of done with the Willie Mac stuff uh, that he was doing just because. I have I have interest I have a hard time finding interest in anything Willie Mac does and I like him and he's a great wrestler but it's it's uh like Johnny Swinger said like he doesn't even have a gimmick you know so it's sometimes it's a little difficult for me to get into his storylines um but moving yeah right- I, I feel the same way about Willie Mac I really do uh he's he's not a great talker um and oh, no. the, the same thing that I say about Deanna Ross- well, I, I really enjoy watching Deanna Perrazzo wrestle, but it annoys me that that she is so soft in the midsection. And again, like, yo, I'm a fat person, so I'm not I'm not body shaming anybody, but I just feel like she would not show up on WWE TV looking like that. And I feel the exact same way about Willie Mack. Willie Mack is a fantastic athlete, right? But the fact that he does not put more care into his look, right? Like that annoys me as a wrestling fan. I'm not saying everybody got to look like John Cena or Charlotte Flair or, you know, nothing like that. Cause I don't believe in that, but I do believe that when people show up on WWE TV, they are in their best shape. And it annoys me and always has that people show up on impact, not in their best shape. Yeah, remember that. you remember when Aaron Rex showed up and he was he was totally out of shape. Yes. And he had to start wrestling with a shirt on. Yes. Yeah. Um Yes. That and, and you know that that's kind of like what which is just totally opposite side of the coin because Rich Swan is not out of shape at all. But that's why I've said too, like for Bound for Glory, I hope he shows up in the best shape of his life. Um I, I think I just think you know, there's something to be said for just just looking as good as you can. You know, we're in a we're in an era where you're supposed to be comfortable with how you look, and uh, I think that's okay to a certain point. But I, I, you know, I think it's always okay to work on work on your appearance too. Um, so I, I hope, uh, you know. And again, this isn't body shaming. This is just uh, like TW says he's fat, and and I work out. So we're we're complete opposite ends of the spectrum. So we can talk about this kind of stuff, but. <laughs> So, um, yeah. but yeah, I, I just think it's always good to be in, in, in your I best shape. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, but, but here's the thing though. Here's the thing though, right? Like again, to me, like my job is to sit behind a desk and, you know, make television, right? Like I don't, I, but I, my job is not to be on, on television, uh, or, or even, even more so on television in my underwear, right? <laughs> and if it were, then I'd be in shape for that, right? Like that's 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 part of the gig, you know what I mean? Like some some part of this is like, you know, like you're so like I get into this argument with uh, NXT fans all the time, and I was like, yo, like I just Adam Cole does not look like a threatening person to me, you right? Know what I mean, part of that. Not all of it, but part of it is the way he looks physically, right? Like he looks like a dude who wouldn't make his high school football team. And I'm like, you know, like I, I again, like you don't gotta be ripped. You don't gotta be six four and and ripped like Randy Orton. Like you don't. That's not necessarily the standard. But as a wrestler, you gotta look like a threatening person, right? Like that's part of the gig. So you know. A big, big, big tangent there. But yes, man, like, you know, it, it, wrestlers that are not in, you know, their best shape, it, it just annoys me. Absolutely. Let's move on um, to RVD and uh, Katie Forbes real quick. So apparently they're gone from the uh, Impact roster page. And uh, I contacted someone over at Impact today, try to get some update on that. And, and, uh, they were unaware <laughs> that they were removed from the page. So I don't know if they're gone or what, uh, you know, RBD recently said if, if WWE or AW, this is all under impact contract. Uh, 
if WWE or AEW made him a, a good offer, he'd consider working there. Um, and, and that's a problem sometimes with bringing people because uh, they may have some name value instead of people who actually want to be there. Uh, so I don't know if that had something to do with it. Uh, he even said a, in our interview recently that if, if his contract with the, uh, when he's done with impact and if he's not brought back, he, he'll be fine with it. <laughs> he was just like, it's, it's just whatever, you know, he says right. something like that. Um, you know, and for the most part, I thought he did, did um, pretty decent with impact. I was looking forward to the cancel culture thing with him. Uh, but that didn't really happen at first when he was the heel where he wasn't doing his moves like that. I found that kind of boring. And then his theme song right now, I actually really like it. Just, it's just so odd. It, it's a good Katie Forbes theme song, but him and Katie are off the site. So we don't really know what that, what that means. Um, because they've, they've, I mean, God, they kept AJ Styles as an active performer on the TNA website. Uh, well into his run with WWE. So um, Lord knows they're, they're willing to keep people up on that site probably longer than they need to be, but it's like he just immediately came down. And when, after this whole thing with Sammy Callahan happened where she got piled, you know, Katie Forbes got piled drove. I was thinking like, where the hell do you go with RVD after this? You know, I was thinking to myself, where, how, how could you possibly do anything with him after this? Um, that that's not beating well, a dead I mean, horse with Sammy. If you look at like, right. If, if you look at like the, um, the way he's gotten into some of these feuds, it's basically the Tommy dreamer, right? It's like, yeah, you know, Oh, I'm doing something backstage. Oh, um, I'm walking past you. You bumped into Katie Forbes. Oh, now we got to fight. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. That's basically been like the, 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 the premise for his last two or three fuse. It has, man. It, it's funny to think of bound. No, it wasn't bound for glory last year, whatever pay-per-view it was where they were, they were building the dream match of RED versus Brian cage when, uh, and, and it drives me nuts <laughs> when they say dream match. One time Don Callis called a, a potential TJP versus Trey Miguel match, a dream match. I'm like, dude, I think, I, I think we're misunderstanding wow. what this, the definition of that is, you know, Shawn Michaels versus AJ, a match we'll never see sting versus undertaker. Those are dream matches, dreams that are almost impossible, if not impossible. Um, but man, they were, they throw that term around so much, but they were, they were like, Oh, the, the dream match of, Brian Cage versus RVD, and then we get to the pay per view, and it's uh, Cage is hurt, and we get this bullshit uh, three minute match <laughs> where, where RVD beat the shit out of Brian Cage. Oh man! And then uh, beats Daga after it. Oh my god, man! What a what a fucking shit show that was. But um, so the, yeah, you know, I, I just kind of want to say, you know. If he's gone, I, I like Katie Forbes. I know a lot of people uh, seem to not like her. I, I think she played a heel pretty good to where it was it was annoying, and he generally disliked her. Um, you know, but I but I liked her, and uh, I kind of wanted to see her wrestle more than than what she was doing. I thought there was I thought there was some legs in a feud with Eddie and um, Alicia. You know, I think it was the Bash of the Brewery too. We were talking about a couple of weeks ago where Eddie actually wrestled RBD and he won. And uh, there was a confrontation between Alyssa and uh, I mean, Alicia, I'm sorry, Alicia and uh, Katie Forbes. So I was like, man, they, they could have ran with this. They're always doing the Alicia's Eddie, Eddie's wife thing. You know, they could have ran with that and did something, but you know, RBD didn't have any real meaningful feuds. It was, it was like you said, it was just the Tommy dreamer thing, you know, uh, we need someone on the bound for glory card. We need We need a random feud. Boom. RVD. So, uh, right. no, no, you got, you got any thoughts on that before I move on, it, move on to this last thing? No, no, I do not. I have nothing to add there. Fair enough. <laughs> like, Fair enough. Katie Forbes, man. I mean, like, uh, I, I just, I have nothing. Okay. Fair enough. Last thing I want to talk about, this um, X Division storyline, I don't know if I like it or I hate it. Um, I, 
I guess I kind of like it because I feel like Ro- Rohit is, has something to do for once. But I also don't like it because it's just clear where it's going. And we're taking this long route to get there. You know, it's clear that these guys are going to have a four-way match. And um, this is something I've, I think since I started covering TNA years ago, that I said that the the way they struggle to communicate information to the audience is is mind blowing, and it's simple stuff. Uh, we talked about the the fans earlier when 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 there were fans there, just fans just kind of sitting on their hands or whatever. And I've always said, man, there's some kind of disconnect that they have with the live audience. You know, um, it's kind of like when we're watching a match on Impact and it's a number one contender match. You, you don't hear David Penzer like, the following match is a number one contenders match for the X Division Championship. We just get a match and we're, because they mentioned on social media it's a number one contenders match, then you know what I mean? There's, there's just, just not like that there's just that disconnect where they just don't deliver simple information sometimes. And with this match, they were saying the winner was going to take on Rohit. And I don't know. Did you see the graphic when uh, impact misspelled the word winner as W I N E R? No, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. This, this, wow. this graphic was floating online for a week and people were resp- like, you you spelled it wrong. You spelled it wrong. You spelled it wrong. Facebook, Twitter, uh, you spelled it wrong. And, and they're still post, you know, continue to post this. They eventually fixed it, I think, like the day of the show. But I was like, oh, my God, man. Um, it just shows that they don't pay attention to their social media. It probably as much as they should because people are telling them, please change the graphic. Um, but to get back to my point, I had no clue he was wrestling the winner af- – immediately after the match i feel like that wasn't clear right. dave penzer did say the the winner will take on rohi raj but they didn't specify they they uh almost made it sound like it was going to be a bound for glory or or a following week like what kind of nonsense is it to have a three-way x division match and then when it's over to have another match right after i i i feel like that wasn't communicated at all and right. if it they, was, they, they didn't say it they did they they did present it as Rohit would take on the winner of that. But to me it all sounded a little weird and and unclear and I definitely didn't think that it would play out the way it did. But again, it does kind of make sense. You know what I mean? Like you're building you're building the the character of Rohit as this, you know, chicken crap champion, right? Like so it makes sense. Yeah, that's why I said, you know, I feel like I like it, but then there's there's just aspects of it that I don't. Um, I like the way he won, you know, it was total, as you said, like chicken shit way of winning. I, I was laughing too because when he ran in the ring, I mean, when, when Rohit got in the ring, he was giving the X Division belt to the, the ref like he was cashing in, cashing in money in the bank. He was like, you got Trey on one side where he <laughs> – He's, you know, he's like barely able to stand in the corner. Uh, and, and then he's like handing him the title, like he's cashing in the briefcase type of thing. I mean, <laughs> it just made me, it just made me laugh. But um, yeah, this is clearly going to a four way. You know, it was, it was never going to be some one-on-one match for the title. Uh, it'll be a good match when it happens. Rohi needs to win it. But at the same time, I feel like there's no way they can have Trey lose another title match. I know I've been saying about the rascals with the tag team titles. There's no way. Like, at some point, you got to put a damn belt on Trey. And uh, that's what that's yeah. the problem I have with multi-person, multi-team matches is, is people just being a part of the losing end all the time for no really no reason. Um, I just – I would have been more invested in just maybe a TJ – TJP has yet to have, like, a high-profile pay-per-view match. I would have just liked to see him versus Rohit personally. I feel like he's got to be working on like a per appearance deal with them or something like that. And it just, they just keep turning it over, over and over again, because for somebody that is so talented uh, and such an interesting dude, 
And he, you know, when he does promos backstage, they're always interesting. So there has to be something there, right? Like some disconnect between him and management that they're not featuring him. They're just, you know, using him when they need a good match. And um, I don't know, he just, he seems like he's too, too good for that, right? Like I said, that seems like a waste of, of, of everything he can do. But yeah, I mean, like, yo, he's so good. He's so good. Yeah, man, I, I, I totally agree. And, and being that he was a former like cruiserweight champion and all that, you would think he had he has push to the moon written all over him. Uh, push to the moon. I used to be in WWE written all over him, and they never really gave that to him. He never he never just got that. Him and Fala never you know there was some potential in a tag team with them, which I know they're still a team, but they just never did anything with him. Now Fala Boz wrestling Johnny Swinger to see who's going to be the best man. Um, and at least TJP's in this kind of storyline. So, but uh, overall, de- <laughs> decent episode of the show. It was just, um, it, it's. I'm ready for some kind of life to be in these shows. I'm just, there's just no life in them, um, and it's becoming a little difficult for me to watch. But all things considered, good show. So, uh, any thoughts? Any uh, closing remarks? Yeah, I think, you know, you're right. Like, I, you know, I, I, I've got, I think the Impact does a fine job with the empty arena wrestling, but it just, you know, like, it's time, man. It is time to find some way to integrate fans back into this show. And again, you know, they don't have the money to do video boards all around the ring like WWE or like the NBA. They don't have the money for that. So, you know, they got to get creative. They got to find some way to integrate fans back into this show um, because the buzz from Slamversary is gone. And now um, it, it was well used, by the way. It was well used. Yeah. But now, you know, we're building to Bound for Glory and and every other wrestling show has fans. So you guys got to, you know, you got to figure out something. You know what I mean? Like different states are finding ways to, you know, I, I, I think I saw uh, a, a news article today from Florida. Their governor said, we're never going back. <laughs> we're, we're only going forward. We're open. So, you know, look, man, y'all guys, they got, they got to find a way to get fans back in. Now, listen, nothing is worth risking the health of the town. But. They just got to find a way. They got to find some way, even if they, you know, find some way to, I've seen like comedy shows where they, there's people, you know, six feet between every group of people, you know, this kind of, they're doing at the AEW shows, you know, find some way, man, you got to get fans back at these shows um, because it's just, I don't, it's just, it's it's not helping the product. It's not helping the product. Um, And we're taking, we're building slowly. Everything, every week there is something happening that's getting us closer to Bound for Glory. But I feel like we need some big, exciting, newsworthy, noteworthy events to happen. And that's the thing that's really, I feel like, missing from, uh, from these Impact shows. So give us more of that. And, yeah, um, yeah. you know, I hope you guys are enjoying the show. You know, BQ, you know. This is uh this is fun. I'm enjoying doing this, man. I'm I'm enjoying I'm enjoying chopping up about these shows. I hope the people are enjoying it. And you know, give us some feedback. Send us some love. Let us know what you guys think about the stuff. Hell to the yeah, and I'm I'm enjoying it too. And uh you're right, the the buzz from Slammiversary is is gone. Um which we expected, but you know, they they've I, I I did I gave a really long rant last year that I'm pretty sure I lost subscribers over, but I was just furious at the lack of buzz for Slammer <laughs> uh, Bound for Glory, um, you know, and we're not saying you need surprises and you need debuts and all that. We're not expecting that again, but you know, I, like I love the NWA and every pay per view they did, man, they found a way that if you liked NWA, you're like, man, I can't wait for this pay-per-view. Like they, they, they found something to make each one important. Um, this was a, a really good opportunity for these knockouts tag team championships. And uh, we're not seeing them, you know? So uh, it's, it's not about debuts, returns, 
there are ways to make pay-per-views feel special and other companies do it. So I know they can too. Uh, let's hope to get some, uh, the ball rolling on slam uh, excuse me, bound for glory here soon and just, you know, get some exciting shit we're talking about. So, uh, this was, a, we ran long today, just kind of had a lot to get into, but thanks to checking us out. Thanks for checking us out. We will talk to you guys again next week. Peace.